G'day, welcome back to the channel. Welcome, welcome back to The Build. For those who, who don't know, or well, that's their first time viewing, uh, my name's Aaron and I'm restoring a 1982 Holden WBU. And uh, this is one of the episodes in a whole series of episodes documenting the whole process. So if you haven't, go back to episode one and follow the journey right through to today. So in this episode, I'm gonna get back into the booth. I've got to start sanding and um, getting the body ready to chuck back onto the chassis. Alright, so following the last episode with the installation of the fuel tank, what I explained last time, the diff, which I now know is a 336 three, ratio, got myself a torque wrench, got myself a gasket, and got myself some diff oil. So I'm going to put that gasket back on, put the cover back on the 10 bolt, seal her up, torque the bolts at the, uh, the bearing caps, seal it up, and that's it. Uh, and it's going to stay on that chassis until I blow it, blow the guts out of it or you know, welcome swallows, pain in the ass, or until I get sick of the uh, revving on the highway again. So basically, the body needs to get back onto the chassis so that I can line the gaps up. We all know that, the guards, the bonnet, do the, do the cow panel, all that kind of stuff. So it's still a fair bit of work to go. So really, now I've got to move all this shit that's sitting here, the timber, the shed's a mess. Um, I've got to somehow align that because I can't store the timber outside, I've got to try and find a place to put this timber so that I can get the chassis back in, into the booth and uh, drop the rotisserie front out and then get the whole, do the reverse engineering process of getting it off onto the rotisserie to get it off the rotisserie. So that's, you know, putting the, uh, the hoist back on, the mezzanine, taking the front bolts off, hoisting it up, taking the front of the rotisserie off, wheeling the, um, the chassis in, and then taking it down with the back of the rotisserie and eventually um, take that rear of the rotisserie off and the body shall be back on the, back on the, um, on the chassis. I've, uh, I'm going to, I was almost going to uh, do this sooner than later, just get a hoist, because I want to put a hoist. I'll show you. This uh, timber needs to go because it is holding up a nice little space here where the chassis can go rolling in. So that's my problem to figure out. Um, yeah, it's in a pretty crap spot. So that's a half a day process just doing that. And uh, yeah, I wanted to get a hoist and I will. I am contemplating getting a hoist soon to put in here, the stairwell I'll cut up here, just get rid of it and then shut and yeah, reduce the width of that or cantilever some kind of hoist system so that it hoists the staircase up out of the way when you're not using it. But I might do it this way. So remove that staircase, put the staircase so it's running down here, but when you're not using it, get a hoist um, similar to what I've got underneath there to, to do the rotisserie and just hoist the staircase up flat and have a locking mechanism so it's out of the way. And that way I can open up this whole area to put a nice big hoist but heaps of room so you know when i'm not using one i can um yeah store it up store one car up there and one below it so it'd be fantastic and anyway in the meantime i've got to get this shit out of the way and clear all this area so that i can uh start to prep the chassis to get in there and um that's the mission that i have do most of my sanding work before this goes on and then once it's on, I will uh, probably wheel it out so that uh, it's not getting dust everywhere. As I'm going to be spraying in here, I know you should never do your sanding in a booth. Obviously, that's, uh, I don't have the luxury of um, doing that elsewhere because of this wood. So that's why I've done that. Come to spray time, I'll give it a thorough clean wash down, um, which will take probably a day in itself. And that way it'll be as clean as possible before we start to uh, do the base coat. So now I don't even know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna just start something.
after a good year and a half, it's finally clear. I can't uh, wait to get the ute in there now. So that's a massive, massive step forward in getting the uh, body back onto the chassis. So now all I need to do is just fix this diff. So I've got my torque wrench, my gear oil, my new uh, diff plate gasket, um, some silicon, the caps, the bolts, and a Gregory's manual with the torque wrench settings. Torque wrench settings, bearing cap bolts, 61 newton meters. So, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so the cover plate's on. That last bolt snapped, which is a nightmare. So I've got two to do now, one on the front uh, suspension, if you remember, and then one here. So yeah, it's gonna hold me up because I don't really want to do it when the body's on. So it's annoying, very annoying. Anyway, this is why this I've slowed down because I'm really torn as to which way to do everything at the moment. Um, but I've given this a run over with 400 and um, yeah, it's pretty smooth. So I'm just going to continue doing that right around everything that I've sprayed and then uh, get it to at least 600 again over that. And that way a lot of the, the dirt and the, a lot of the dust and stuff will be, um, be off. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to start now. Okay, so, yeah, I forgot to actually record this. However, as I was um, sanding back this high fill, I realised after I'd uh, run over it with the 400 and then 600 and did a wet test there was a lot of highs and lows and um or a lot of lows that it needed to be rectified so i did another um full rundown of body filler quite extensive on that uh, passenger side and then once i um, got that to a certain point that i could really start to see where i'd missed um, the areas before I decided that I was going to change my uh, course of action and go and get some polyester surfacer spray and then run over it with that. And that was something that I was deliberating about last time uh, and went straight for the high, high build. However, um, definitely worth it. As I, I went to Perros and Bendigo, went and got their polyester surfacer. I can't remember the brand and it was um, it was great. I just yeah applied it about three or three coats, three thick coats. It built up really really fast, and then I started sanding it back and used the guide coat. And all those little undulations that I was really chasing and having a hard time with were just feathered out. So my advice from being uh, from using all three methods is definitely go the body filler, then the polyester surfacer. I was told to do that, and I didn't and I regretted it. So it's definitely worth putting that into your process. So before I wrap it up, just wanted to go back in the booth and show you the progress. This has got the polyester filler on it, and I've just been doing some more guide coat. I found that there was a little bit of a low here, so I've just refined that. Then I'll put some more polyester filler on it and sand it back, and then I'll put the high build on it. And over on this side, I've just gone through second round of filler, 
just gone all the, uh, did a wet, wet test, wet it down with some degrees. I saw all the lows, there was a fair few of them. Um, if I went to straight to paint from here, you'd be just absolutely um, mortified by the, the lows and stuff. So yeah, it's a really good light coming through from this, uh, from this door. I'll use that to my advantage. And just going through now and sending it all back. So that'll be the next episode. Get that into polyester filler and high build, and then it'll be ready. I'll seam seal the underneath. I'm pretty sure that's all I need to do to, to, before I lower it down. Yeah, so very excited to, to get it finally back on the chassis. I know it's been ages, but you can't rush these things. Also, a few people have asked me about the hoodies. So you can get all these hoodies online uh, through Teespring. Got a store there, and the link is in the description of this video. So if you want one, jump on there and grab one. All right, so she's finally lined up. I'm ready to go back into the booth to get the body on. Obviously, there's a little few little things I'm still going to do. Going to fix that broken bowl. Um, just a few little odds and ends. I'm going to go back into the, the booth now. Seam seal the underside of the, underside of the uh, cabin. Finish off the rest of the body work. And then she's going in. And then I'm going to lower it down. So that'll be the next episode. I'll see you then.